Crafting a truly great movie character requires an extremely tricky combination of sharp writing, a strong performance, and an added dash of luck. It can't be forced or contrived, as so many unworthy filmmakers have tried to do. But maintaining a truly great movie character is a different beast entirely, as was categorically proved by these 10 once beloved movie characters. Whether a brand new iteration of a classic screen icon or simply the continued depiction of a fan favourite, in each case their esteem was thoroughly derailed by atrocious writing. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 awesome movie characters ruined by terrible writing. 10. Blofeld, Spectre. There's no James Bond villain more iconic than Blofeld, and when Christopher Waltz was cast as the character, or Franz Oberhauser in Spectre, fans were delighted to see a world-class, Oscar-winning actor take a stab at the part. But despite Waltz's solid effort, Spectre's depiction of Blofeld was a crushing disappointment, and it's 100% down to the script's lazy, cliched treatment of the cat-stroking baddie. In addition to spending the bulk of the movie off-screen, he's introduced in earnest in the third act as the wildly contrived architect of everything James has suffered in the last three movies. Worse still, it's also revealed that Blofeld was Bond's foster brother, creating another eye-rollingly forced link between the hero and the villain that absolutely did not need to exist. 9. Jonathan Kent, Man of Steel Superman's old foster dad, Jonathan Kent, has always been a likeable, salt-of-the-earth type who helped to teach Clark the decent values of humanity. When Kevin Costner was cast as a grizzled reinterpretation of the character in Man of Steel, most fans were delighted, only to find his ultimate portrayal extremely puzzling. But what truly riled them up was Jonathan's thoroughly unconvincing death scene. Jonathan is killed in the middle of a storm after he begs Clark not to rescue him and reveal his identity, which basically makes no sense, as Clark could easily have done both. 8. John Connor, Terminator, Genesis, and Dark Fate the Terminator series protagonist John Connor is one of the most iconic characters in all of science fiction. Terminator Genesis made the ballsy, if not ultimately misguided, decision to reinvent Connor as not only an antagonist, but a T-3000 human-machine hybrid. Needless to say, fans were extremely upset that the future Resistance leader had his fate so thoroughly altered like this. After Genesis tanked to the box office, it and all post-T2 sequels were jettisoned by the most recent sequel, Terminator Dark Fate which, once again, invokes the ire of the fanbase by killing off a young John in its very first scene. Given that John is the linchpin around which the rest of the franchise centers, wiping him off the chessboard entirely wasn't much better than turning him into a villain. 7. Ellen Ripley, Alien Resurrection Despite Alien 3 ending with Ripley taking a sacrificial dive into the molten drink to try and prevent the big bads from retrieving the xenomorph queen growing inside her, she was improbably brought back to life in the ridiculous sequel, Alien Resurrection. 200 years after her death, Ripley is cloned from blood taken prior to her demise, providing a laughable sub-fanfic excuse for Ripley to appear in yet another Alien movie. Though Weaver's performance is as strong as ever, Whedon's script is forced to jump through so many hoops to explain Ripley's presence. It's it's just bad, okay? 6. David Dunn, Glass M. Night's cult classic superhero thriller Unbreakable introduced audiences to David Dunn, the sole survivor of a horrific train crash who comes to learn that he harbors superhuman abilities. When Shyamalan's Split turned out to be a secret sequel to Unbreakable, complete with a shock last-minute appearance from Dunn himself, the stage seemed very much set for the third film Glass to deliver an epic conclusion to Dunn's story. But Glass sadly turned out to be one of the biggest cinematic disappointments of the last few years, culminating in the deaths of not only Dunn, but also fellow superhumans The Horde and Mr. Glass. Though Unbreakable firmly established Dunn's weakness as water, it was still frustratingly anticlimactic to see him casually drowned in a small puddle by some random goon in the film's finale. 5. Michael Myers, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers the entire appeal of Michael Myers in John Carpenter's original Halloween was that he was an unstoppable and unexplainable merchant of death. However, as the series delivered a glut of increasingly undignified and lazy sequels, the filmmakers also decided that they needed to actually explain Myers' origins in some form to keep audiences coming back. And so we have Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, which made the spectacularly boneheaded decision to reveal that Michael is infected with a druid curse called Thorn. 
Though all of the Halloween sequels were finally decanonized by the 2018 sequel reboot, for almost 25 years, fans had to accept this agonizingly stupid origin story for one of horror's most compelling antagonists. 4. Magneto – X-Men Apocalypse Magneto is easily one of the greatest X-Men characters, brought to vibrant life by Ian McKellen in the OT, while his younger self was lent a spirited rendition by Michael Fassbender. But the X-Men series also quickly found itself stuck in a rut with Magneto as a character. This reached self-parody levels in X-Men Apocalypse, where, rather than simply opposing Xavier, Magneto used his powers to affect the Earth's magnetic poles, causing worldwide destruction, literally killing tens or even hundreds of millions in the process. And yet, by the film's end, all appears to be forgiven as if nothing more than a minor inconvenience occurred. A simple, predictable quirk of Magneto's character to literally kill hundreds of millions. 3. Mako Mori – Pacific Rim Uprising Mako Mori was easily the standout character in Pacific Rim. Between the devastating loss of Mako's family in a kaiju attack as a child, and her subsequent adoption by Pentecost, she's an effortlessly sympathetic and likeable character, who also happens to be a resourceful and badass pilot. Infuriating it was, then, when Mako was relegated to a glorified cameo role in the lame brain sequel, Pacific Rim Uprising, as a suited-up general kept at arm's length for most of the action. But, worse still, Mako is killed off early in the movie by Obsidian Fury in a staggeringly underwhelming fashion. There's no heroic final stand or sacrifice, just a helpless woman in a chopper being knocked out of the sky. Lame. 2. Kylo Ren – Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker now, to be fair, Iffy writing knocked back a good deal of the new characters in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, but none quite as egregiously as Kylo Ren. Ren was introduced in The Force Awakens as a compellingly multifaceted villain. The Last Jedi then saw him grow into a more threatening antagonist in his own right, culminating in the surprise murder of Supreme Leader Snoke. This seemed to suggest that Kylo would assume the primary villain mantle for The Rise of Skywalker, only for that spot to actually be taken by a nostalgia baiting zombie puppet version of Emperor Palpatine. And so, rather than double down on Kylo Ren's villainy, the film more or less walked back on his prior characterization, lazily giving him an unearned Vader 2.0 redemption story, ending with him defeating his own Knights of Ren and sacrificing himself to revive a dead Rey. 1. Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean, On Stranger Tides, and Dead Men Tell No Tales There's no denying that Jack Sparrow was the easy breakout character of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yet, as the sequels became increasingly bereft of ideas, they also began to lean back ever more enthusiastically on Depp's sozzled pirate rock star shtick, nudging it to the foreground in favour of the actual protagonists, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner. With neither Knightley nor Bloom returning for the fourth film on Stranger Tides, Depp was shuttled into the lead role as Jack Sparrow, effectively becoming a parody of himself, an excessively buffoonish goof whose prior charm had basically worn thin. And there you have it folks, 10 awesome movie characters ruined by terrible writing. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for What Culture. thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.